Hi there. Welcome to this video on integration by parts. Now, when do we use integration by parts? Well, it's when we essentially have got two functions of x being multiplied together and we've got to integrate them, say, with respect to x. It's not, though, for something like this. If you've got the integral, say, of x times x plus 1 integrated with respect to x, we've got two functions of x here being multiplied together, x with x plus 1. But you wouldn't use integration by parts for this because you can expand the bracket, so we end up with the integral of x squared plus x, integrate that with respect to x, and we can integrate each term. The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3, and the integral of x is x squared over 2. And then don't forget the constant of integration plus c. Now it's not for types like this. It's for types like these, where we cannot expand. Let's take this first example, for instance. It's the integral of x squared times e to the power 3x. This could be x cubed times e to the power 2x, for instance. Here we've got an x to the power n function multiplied by an exponential function, something of the form e to the power ax, say. In this example, we've got x times cos 2x. We can't expand this. You might get similar ones like x squared times sine 3x, for instance an x to the power n type function with some trigonometric function. And here's a special type which we'll be discussing later on in another video where we've got the integral of say x to the power n multiplied by a natural log type. In this example x cubed times the natural log of x. Or you might get this type here, where you've got an exponential function multiplied with a trig function, like e to the 2x times sine 3x. So, what is this method we call integration by parts? Well, the formula is given by this here, which you generally see in most formula books, but I would encourage you to learn it. Now, I'm giving you this without any proof but I'll prove it to you in a later video. But for now, all we need to do is to be able to use it. Essentially, when we've got a product of two functions of x, we call them u and dv by dx. So for an example like this one here, what we do is we call this first part x to the power n, say u, okay, we just put that in as u, and this second function here, e to the power 3x in this case, we would nominate to be dv by dx. So what we see here is that if we've got something like this, then it's equal to u times v, v is the integral of what we called dv by dx, and then it's minus the integral of v times du dx, so we will need to differentiate the part that we called u. And then we integrate this with respect to x. Now, it's better if I just run through an example, because, as I say, this looks pretty grim at the moment, but as I say, it's not really that difficult. So let's just take an example. I'll do two examples in this. The first example will be quite lengthy. Okay, I'm just going to take my time about setting it out, showing you the stages. And the second example, which I'd encourage you to try, maybe you might like to try it a bit quicker. So let's say we've got the integral of x sine 2x something like this one here, then what we do is we call this first part here u and the second part here dv by dx. So when we get this one, this will be our u and this will be the dv by dx. Normally I wouldn't write the u and the dv by dx in. I'd generally remember what I've nominated each part to be. But leave it up to you, okay? So following the formula here, what we've got to do is it's equal to u, so we take u, we 
which is x in this example, just put it in brackets. I'd certainly encourage you to do that. And then we multiply it by the integral of what was the other part, v being the integral of dv dx. So we integrate sine 2x. And if we integrate sine 2x, that's going to be minus a half cos of 2x. And again, put that in brackets. So this is v, v being the integral of dv by dx then. And then it's minus the integral of v. So if you've just left it like this in this form, all you've got to do is just copy what you wrote in this bracket back down again here. So it's going to be the integral of minus a half cos 2x. And then we multiply this by du dx. In other words, we need to differentiate what we called u. So in this example, u was x. And if we differentiate x with respect to x, we get 1. So I'll just put that 1 in there. Not that it's really going to make much difference. So the next step is generally to tidy this up. So for this first term, we've now got minus and then we've got half x, or we could write that as x over 2. Leave it up to you. Multiplied by cosine of 2x. And then for this next stage, I'd generally encourage you just to tidy this up. Not to integrate it, but just to tidy it up. So we've got a minus times a minus there, so it's going to be positive. We've got a constant here as well, the half, and it's a good idea to bring constants out the front of an integral. So we've got plus half the integral of cos 2x, and that's integrated with respect to x. So generally, my second line would be to clean up. And then the next line will be to carry out this integration here. In this example, it's not a particularly difficult integration, but I'll just again do it in slow stages. We've got the half here, okay, uh, but the integral of cos 2x is a half sine 2x, so we'll just put half sine 2x there. And then at this stage, don't forget the constant of integration, which I'll call plus c. And then we can tidy up this second term here. The first term is minus x over 2, cos 2x. And then multiplying this out, you've got a quarter of sine 2x. And then you've got the constant of integration plus c. And that's essentially it. But you might want to clean this up further. For instance, put this term first because it's positive. And also to pull out, say, a quarter. If you pull out a quarter, then taking this term, it's going to be sine 2x. And then for the second term, it would have to be, well, for half, it would be 2 quarters. So I can just write this as minus 2x cos 2x. So what this does is it gives us fewer fractions by pulling that quarter out, okay? That's one example, and I did say that I'd get you to have a go at another example, and uh, that example would be, say, this one here, similar to this kind of thing we've got up here. Let's say we take the integral of x e to the power 3x integrated with respect to x. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this one, I would let the x be the u and e to the 3x would be the dv by dx. Now with this one, then we've got u times v. So that would be u, which is the x. And we multiply it with v, which is the integral of dv by dx. So we have to integrate e to the 3x. So that's going to be 1 third e to the power 3x. Put each of these in brackets. That's what I would always advise you to do. 
And then it's minus the integral of v. Well, v was this part, so we just put that back in again as one third e to the power three x, and that's multiplied then by du dx, the differential of u with respect to x. Well, u was x, and so that's just going to be one, and then we put that as dx there. Now, because I haven't got much room here, just going to shorten this. We've got a third x here, or x over 3, and that's multiplied by e to the power 3x. And then for this last integral here, I can see this is the integral of a third e to the 3x. And so that's going to be a third times one third e to the power 3x. In other words, one ninth e to the power 3x. And there's a minus there as well. So it's going to be one ninth e to the power 3x and then plus the constant of integration plus c. And it's up to you whether you clean that up any further. But essentially, I hope that gives you some idea there how to do that. Now, I just want to take this a bit further because there's these special types here. When you get an x to the power n type multiplied with a natural log, then what happens is we always call this natural log term the u part. Okay, So you need to be careful with these ones. This is the u, and this part here, the x to the power m part, this is the dv by dx part. Okay, So you've got to take care on those. And I'll look at this type of example in another video in this series. And when it comes to these ones, where you get exponential and trig types, then it really doesn't matter which one of these two functions here you pick as your u. So you could take then u to be e to the power 2x. That would mean that dv by dx was the sine 3x. But you could switch them around, okay? It doesn't matter. And this is quite a tricky type. And again, I'll discuss this type of question in another video. But for now, hopefully, you should be able to handle types like this, okay? Now, the examples I've given you here, though, just start with an x. In my next video in this series, what I'll do is I'll show you similar examples again, where it's got, for instance, an x squared at the front. Same method, but it's slightly longer. So I hope you'll have a look at that. But for now, thanks for listening, and I hope that's been of some use to you.